This is the story of Kayama, a farming community located in a border region of Nigeria, surrounded by hundreds of kilometers of bad roads, which include numerous gullies, collapsed bridges, and weak culverts. It is also the rich heart of fertile soils, festivals, cultures, and numerous tourist sites. Three federal roads lead to Kayama in Kwara State. These are the Kayama Kishi, Kayama Wawa, and Kayama Kusobosu roads. The roads have a number of failed portions, which makes life extremely difficult for the huge farming population of the area. Farmers find it difficult to move their goods from Kayama to other areas where they can market their products. And you know the importance of marketing in uh, farming activities. Farming has grown beyond local consumption now. A journey along any of these roads that should last an hour exceeds five hours on account of the extremely bad sections of the road. Gully erosion threatens the roads in a number of places and there are numerous collapsed bridges and weak culverts. These fractured remains of the bridge capture the broken and dislocated lives of the hundreds of people who live along both sides of the road. At one spot along the Kayama Wawa Road, a bridge has completely fallen apart. In the rainy season, many parts of the roads become flooded, effectively cutting Kayama off from Ilorin, Kainji in Niger State, as well as the Republic of Benin. When you come, you pass through some places that are supposed to have some bridges, not even corvettes. So you get when it is raining season. My farm is somewhere there. I remember some times ago where there was evident poor. We were coming and it was, and uh, that, the road was cut up. We stayed there for almost a day. We have to turn back. Drivers and locals create alternative routes to enable motorists convey persons and goods to locations further down the road. Trees now grow on the original road, long since abandoned. A good example of this is the Kayama Kusobosu Road. The Kayama Kusobosu Road in Kwara State is a federal road, but it has failed, and there are many unmotorable sections of the road. A journey of 60 kilometers out of Kayama in the direction of Kusobosu takes two hours, whereas ordinarily it should be 30 minutes if the road was a tired one. On account of the failed roads, there are numerous diversions along the Kayama Kusobosu road. And in fact, diversions are a principal feature of this road. The totality of this situation has made life very difficult and rigorous for the people who live in this part of Nigeria. On the other hand, Kayama is blessed with fertile soils and a hard-working farming population. The locals do not need to make use of fertilizer in the course of farming as the land yields richly all year round. 
were into grains, like guinecom, maize, soya beans. And I also say even this year, for the fact that we don't have data, but I must say that the soya beans that was produced in this community, or even in Kayama this year, I don't think any other community in this whole of Nigeria produces such. Because we, we are aware that on daily basis, about 10 to 15 trailers convey soya beans out. On Friday, every farmer will continue to troop in with their goods up to Saturday. So now the market is set. So by 2 o'clock, if you enter with your goods, it's going to be late for you. It will be late. It will be late. Because as at that time, those who will buy other crops have already buy. So at that material time, it will be cheaper because there is no longer money with them. So some people used to pack it home if it's too cheap, if they don't buy it as a normal price. Kayama has been described as the food basket of Para State, and this for a very good reason. Every year, it produces an infinite variety of crops. These include rice, beans, soya beans, chia butter, and much else, which are transported to other parts of Nigeria and also into West Africa. Meanwhile, the three federal roads which surround Kayama are in very bad shape, and this has negative implications for the agricultural economy. Something remarkable often happens in the rural parts of Kayama. When a baby is born, it is immediately rubbed all over with shea butter, which is produced in large quantities locally. This well-developed cultural practice points to the centrality of the butter in the lives of these people who use simple tools to till the friendly earth. We <laughs> And with the road network, I am very, very sure that uh, this shea butter industry will grow. I can see from my point of observation, people come from uh, Abuja, people come from uh, Ilori, people come from the uh, Republic of Benin to borrow our, the mode of making this shea butter. But always their complaint is the road network. Joyce Carey, a British district officer, constructed the Kayama Wawa Road between the years 1917 and 1919 when he worked in Kayama. Kari's construction effort is captured briefly in Husseini Abdu's work titled Partitioned Borgu. Was it easier to construct roads in colonial times? It is implied that a record two years was needed to construct the Kayama Wawa Road. In partitioned Borgu, Kayama and Borgu, to which it belongs, 
is described by Professor Anthony Ashewaju, who wrote the foreword to the work, as being an infrastructurally deficit part of West Africa. Kayama has everything. This refers to fertile soil, rich harvest, good weather, and a friendly population, but the community lacks so much. The processing of shea butter by the women lasts many hours. This spans the period spent picking the nuts, washing, drying, grinding, and much else. It is a labor-intensive, woman-led industry. The people have long since recognized the antibacterial properties of the butter, and this makes it very popular. And they will go. Ah, what day? Told Nongaga in your dama. Nelly need that you wabble. Told me. A sow kicker. See what day? Bang gagu a tongue pass a la mamma. Told Monsu of one you wow. I need in love with her. Ban no simway. Told Kemma, then die. I would on a pencil. Yam. Yam flour, beans, soya beans, shea nuts, and rice are some of the many crops cultivated in the community. However, the roads in the countryside are even worse than the federal roads, cutting off the farms at the height of the rainy season, sometimes for upwards of two months. Farmers suffer huge losses during the rainy season, which means that each year they look towards the rains with some level of apprehension. During the rainy season, the river full with water. People have got it very difficult to cross. People, we are busy people, gather money to buy kelu. The kelu cost 60,000 last year. 60,000 naira. 60, naira. Okay. While this year we are gathering money to buy another one, which is 100,000 this year. 100, the river is? got full from uh, November, I mean August, September, November. August, September, October. October, eh, August, September, October. Okay, that's During the dry season, farmers use their vehicles and motorcycles to fetch water in jerry cans in order to water their farms. Cars, lorries and trucks have to be serviced once a week or four times a month on account of the poor state of the federal roads. This amounts to 300,000 naira each month. There are huge economic consequences wherever the roads have failed. Primacy now, this primacy, is cost about two point something million now. If you buy it, it will last for six months. You started giving you problem because of the bad road. You from tire for body from from the body from the engine. We will just enjoy it for six months. Then that is all. Because of bad road, that is what we are experience. And for the economies, if you are told the all three federal government will be fees, Kayama, local government alone can fix this nation. If three, uh, this federal, uh, federal government road for the three, uh, three uh, um, uh, this, uh, can be fixed, Kayama local government alone can feed the nation. So, this is the reason. Kayama, we have, we have been blessed with a, a plenty of land, and we have a lot of farmers that can produce. And by the time you produce your farm goods, there's no road can transfer. You can you transfer your farm goods from one place to another. That is the problem we are experiencing. For instance, from Degeji to Kayama, is less than uh, less than, less than uh, 45 kilometers. But uh, if you want to transfer your goods from from Degeji to Kayama here, 
it will cost you. Maybe you divided the transport money, you will divide it into two with your, your, your farm goods uh, profit. If you go to Gorea, if you go to Woro, if you go to Degeji, I mean, if you go to uh, Nanu and other area, like uh, Nanu about three days ago now, one of my driver was killed. Was killed by Bandri because of the bad road. Nanu. Nanu. Every week you have to service your car. Every week. And how much does it cost the, the service of cars, like, like this small car, the service of the car, you took like 70 or 75,000 naira. 75,000 naira. You, you will buy oil. You will buy all this. So, I mean, as far as now, front of as far is is, is is like 15,000 naira. And there's no way you apply a loan a week with, 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 without changing dents. So, soga, soga. Four, and they have so, four soga soga. One is 15,000 naira. The spring at back there is 7,500 naira. And there's no way in the way you can't change the spring because of the back row. Well, your way going, if you didn't break, on your way coming, you may break. So um, you, you don't have option, you have to change it. Like a lorry, if you take off, around, around rain season, if you take off by, by 6 o'clock, before you enter here, you will around 2 p.m. Like come out to a lorry now. If you are told the, the, the road is okay, it's around, it's, it's two hour, 30 minutes journey. But now, since, like drive sitting now here, we will drive five hours. There's no doubt you drive five hours before you ride up to a lorry. Like Nibusa, Nibusa is less than, Less than one hour journey. If there's if, if the road is in good condition, less than one hour. But now you drive three hour, three hour thirty minutes. Like Gogosu. Gogosu is is a, is a, a sixty-five kilometer journey. 50, okay, fifty-five kilometer journey. Less than less than hour. But you go from here to Kuskosu is about seven hours. There's no doubt you spend seven hours before you get to Kuskosu. As a fallout of the failed roads, middlemen fix the prices of goods and commodities. The local farmers make very little gains despite their immense resilience and capacity. There is a sense in which we can say that failed roads impoverish the local farmer. In addition to its agricultural produce, Kayama has a rich cultural repertoire. It has the annual Ghani festival, its famous royal weddings, and many remarkable dances. Bad roads mean that people are not able to travel to Kayama to watch any of these great cultural events. Bad roads have implications for festivals and culture as a whole. Tourism is fantastic because um, if you travel around uh, around Kayama, you would have seen that we are blessed with natural features, especially landmarks. You know, rocks. You know, plants. You know, different species of plants and animals. And again, of course, you would have heard of the Borgu Game Reserve. You know, Borgu Game Reserve. That's the forest itself extend up to Kayama. Kayama is blessed with very educated people, very very educated. People who have traveled very far and wide, people who are very experienced, you know, uh, that are ready to support whatever development will come. So what am I trying to say in effect is we have, we are blessed with total, if you want to put it that way, human capital in Kayama. Kayama is a very long tradition that dates back to hundreds, you know, centuries. You know, it came, you know, people came, you know, settled there and all that. So uh, we have our culture. Indeed, we have the Borgu extraction. I don't know if you are aware of Borgu. Borgu is actually an enclave that traverses, uh, uh, you know, KB State, Puara State, Benin Republic, you know, and then our brothers and sisters, you know, very close with us in Barutain and all that. So our tourism in terms of our culture is fantastic. You know, the Ghani Festival, you know, the Zanganu Festival. And again, our marriage, you know, is also a beauty to behold especially if it is being done in the, in the royal setting, you know, and of course, you see our women, we are very beautiful women, you know, very beautiful ladies and men who are full of potential, so for culture, actually we are doing very well. Yes. It has been posited by a number of scholars that the further you are from a country's capital, or the further you are from a state capital, 
the higher the degree of neglect, poverty, injustice, and underdevelopment. Attacks by bandits have been reported along the three federal roads, and this worsens an already precarious situation. If there's any challenges here, the army, the police, and they, if we need any assistance, for them to come here and assist us, we take them a lot of times before they get there. When you want to experience a development in any community, road is the first uh, 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 infrastructure that we expect to bring uh, development, even in time of uh, a company to come to a particular community or the issue of uh, security to the road also boost the 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 the, 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 the uh, I mean the security network. But when road is very bad, if we have any security challenge there, when you reported to to, to 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 police or security before they can come down to Kayama community, it will take them a time before they go to the community and arrest the situation. I have about 3,500 members in my custody. Here yeah, in Kayama, across the Kayama local government, because I have about eight or nine units in my office here. I have uh, a loan unit which is from Kama to Ilon, they were applying. I have Kanjiwawa Road that uh, we are applying, we are dealing with uh, uh, Niger State to Kama. Then I have Goria Unit, that is from Goria to Ilon. I have Bani Unit, I have Adena Unit, I have Kishibo Unit, I have Kusukusu Unit, Kusukusu Bypass here. You have, maybe you have room there, you see what is happening here. We have Kemanji Unit, and also we have Kanikoko Unit. Sometimes we spend four days, five days, in fact, before we get to Kiji. So that is why in this area here, yes, sir? And it's because of the bad road or the network. If the road will block totally, because when you get to there, it will be, when it is raining, so when you get here, most of our trucks will be sinking. And if another, if one truck sink, the one that coming uh, another cannot pass. And the one that is coming from uh, uh, Kishi down to Kaima here cannot also pass. <laughs> The Starlet brand of car was once popular as the car of choice in Kayama. However, the NURTW decided to make use of the Mazda Primacy, which is seen to be a more sturdy and rugged car, which can withstand the wear and tear occasioned by the bad roads. Drivers mention that if you buy a car, Within a period of six months, it will start to develop serious mechanical faults. In addition, cars are always overloaded with goods and other items are skillfully placed on the roof. Cattle are sometimes forced into the boots of the cars that traverse the failed roads. Sometimes, taxi drivers have to raise money to hire bulldozers in the rainy season when after a downpour, the roads are flooded. Hiring a bulldozer costs as much as 300,000 Naira. We are told of a situation during the last rainy season when the NURTW had to hire a bulldozer from Kishi in Oyo State to assist in opening a blocked road in Kayama, Kwara State. At times, we just get look at uh, this uh, uh, ad labor people to get them there for them to open another road for us to leave the government road to also form our road by ourselves sometime cut trees uh, and uh, uh, to uh, lay trees where our truck we able to pass and for how long can we do this we can't do anything for we to we just do that one just uh, for us to survive to just get something but within two weeks three weeks most of our trucks are there and as it caused accident a lot Women are a powerful group 
in Kayama's agricultural economy. Almost every house in the Kebefandi area of Kayama is involved in the shea butter processing business. Elderly women train the young girls in the age-old method of processing the shea nut into the much sought after butter. There is no federal institution in Kayama and there are no major industries or establishments. This is the ideal place for agriculture. Because it's not only here that we serve all the, the ones that we call, all the ingredients are working for the university is there. The land is there, the agric is there, the forestry side is there, the national park is there, so vast. We got them in Zambezi and all the rest. Then there's a large kanji lake there. We can do for farming. Okay, I mind, we are always very unlucky when it comes to road projects, all this thing. Since I was a small kid, the first major road that was awarded was this uh, Kayama to Hawaii in 1973 or 72 by Banjo Kodo in the time of military era Bangwe. That round, the state government, the federal government took over, it took about 15 years. It's when Babagina came on Bugari then that terminated the contract. It was awarded to Banjo Kodo. They completed in 1985. The road now is gone. It was then before. So it's so bad that it's one of the worst roads. If you are going to New Musano, you spend about minimum of about four hours, a journey of less than 60 kilometers. We rely on farming. We produce a lot of things that you know yams, yam flowers, corns, and what have you. And we are blessed in this area blessed with the fact that we don't even need to apply fertilizers for our crops to, to yield what we want. Work has since commenced on sections of the Kayama Kishi Road. This is being facilitated by the Kwara State Government. There is also ongoing work along the Kayama Wawa Road. Kayama is blessed with so much in terms of crops, tourism, land, and a talented, hard-working farming population. Yet, it remains a poor, neglected community lacking in infrastructure. <laughs> 